I've been on the lookout for a new keyboard and recently decided to buy a new one. However, I have my Korg Nano Control 2 that I use to control my stream audio stuff mounted a, uh, a certain way on my previous keyboard and it's something that I really like. Check it out. Bam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the perfect streamer keyboard with the new one that I bought. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. Or streamer technician? Hmm. Real quick, if you're new around here and are into tech, PC, hardware, gaming, stream tips, tutorials, news and reviews, you are in the right place. Click that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stretch to, I stretch, I stream to Twitch every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific, twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So if you wanna talk some tech and hang out, uh, that's the place to do it. So drop a follow, we'll see you there. Anyways, let's get to the video. So this is the brand new EVGA Z15 keyboard. They just came out with this thing. It uses optical switches, it's RGB. I got this one with uh, linear keys. So I guess kind of like MX speeds or MX reds, cherry reds, something like that. So a little less clicky. Here's the, the box for it, by the way. Z15 mechanical gaming keyboard. I've been wanting an optical switch keyboard for a while and their elite member pricing on this one that made it like 65 bucks and then i had an extra evga discount stuff so i only ended up paying 22 bucks for this thing which is freaking insane now as you can see small chin on the top just a small little uh, amount of space at the top we got a little volume roller here media control keys here um, overall i think it's a pretty nice keyboard but i also have evga's previous keyboard that I won in a contest from them. Just red, but what's interesting about this one is it has a lot more space on the top. That LCD screen never really used it. However, this, which I featured in a previous video to control your volume sources, such an awesome tool for streamers. I'll link it uh, right over there if you guys want to check it out or down in the description below. This is the Korg Nano Control 2 MIDI controller. Eight faders, I can control eight volume sources with these faders right in Windows with some extra software. Pretty awesome. What's better is I have it mounted to the keyboard, so I have my volume controllers, media control keys, which this also has, as well as the one on the keyboard, and my stream deck, everything that I would need to access real, real quick right here all together. So this combination to me makes the perfect keyboard. I've been having a few issues with my EVGA Z10, Spill a little water on it over here, and then ever since then it quite hasn't been the same. Also, I probably just need to clean it. So, now that I have the new keyboard, I thought to myself, how do I do the same thing with mounting the Korg up here at the top? Well, I think I'm going to cut a piece of acrylic and attach it here to have a little shelf for the Korg to mount to. However, it's not really supported on the sides. Actually, the, this little chin on the top is actually gonna be a little bit of a detriment. So it won't be supported on the sides. You can see it just sort of flops. Um, there isn't, there's some space there. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some spacers, which I've identified to be something like this, and put them into the acrylic to where it sits on the acrylic, like that. I'm gonna. It, I'm actually gonna screw them through so it rests a little bit more on it. And that way, this, this uh, acrylic piece will be supported on both sides and the middle, and hopefully the cord will rest a little bit better on it. But I also have to cut the acrylic down to size, so let's get to it. Okay, so I went ahead and set the, uh, the cord down on the acrylic plate, just so I can measure out, like, looks like the plate that I have is the perfect width already, but, I have to get a spot to cut over here. So let's mark it with a Sharpie right about here. That's where I'll know to cut. Get one out, I got a mark on this side too. There we go. So now I've got to score it along that line there. That I'll, well, I'll complete the line here in a second. And then we got to just break that acrylic in half. So I'm just gonna run this, uh, this razor blade down that line that I made to score it but I need two hands. So put the camera down right now real quick. Well, good thing I have more acrylic. All 
Oh, geez. That scared me. <laughs> but, oh my goodness, it broke along a line that I didn't want it to break. Let's see. Look, a little too wide. I could kind of work with that though. So the acrylic isn't that thick that I'm gonna try cutting it with scissors at the spot where I kind of want it to be a little thinner. So basically along the score that it did, because that score is still there. So let's see if I can do that. It's just all bad. All bad, <laughs> just shattering. Like, come on, just break along. I can still work with that. <laughs> just break along the score, you know? Okay, I'm back from the garage and I have the, uh, the acrylic piece here. I ended up just using pliers to continue breaking it along the way. And uh, it pretty much aligned with the score there, except for one little spot. But um, this is not really needed, needed to be aesthetically pleasing. So that will work for me. And uh, well, now it's time for the next couple of steps. So I need to drill some holes in the sides, in the corner, so I can uh, thread those, uh, those standoffs onto it. And then, uh, then I'll be mounting it to the keyboard. So let's do that. Okay, holes have been drilled, but um, and I've gone ahead and threaded in the uh, little standoffs to work, well, as standoffs. Well, I guess they're case screws, neural thumb screws, but yeah, whatever. Problem is, now they stick out so much that uh, I can't really set this down properly on it. See? Got some more work to do. Time to bust out the Dremel. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, grinded them down. Now they're flush. They're still attached, not gonna fall out. Let's set this guy on top. Boom, yeah, no problems. No problems at all. All right, let's get this mounted to the keyboard now. Okay, I went ahead and applied Gorilla double-sided mounting tape to the notch there, the EVGA notch, or well, lip, chin, whatever you wanna call it, and a little bit on the bottom of my standoffs here, as you can see. So let's go ahead and set this thing down and on there. And then push down on it. You can see the, the tape making its contact. <clears throat> Come on. Good, good. Down there. Oh yeah, that's, that works out perfectly. Okay, so <laughs> you can barely even see that there's anything there. But uh, when I, now, now that it's in focus, you kind of can. Sucks that the break on the, on the acrylic is that nice, but you know, I'm supposed to be setting this guy down on there. So let's see how it looks now with the, uh, the Korg set on top. Bam. Okay, looks like this is gonna work out. Let's do the final touches though. I got some Velcro double-sided stuff. So let me go ahead and stick that on. And voila, it looks like it's just about complete. Hey, there we go, check that out. So, let's swap it down at the desk and see how it's really gonna fit in all together. Hey, hey. All right, also, can't forget, wrist rest. It's magnetic. Nice.
now for a quick typing test. This EVGA Z15 keyboard uses the Kale Speed Silvers, I think it was, linear optical mechanical switches. Let's see how it sounds. And so there we have it. The keyboard mod is complete. Um, I guess you can say it's a very DIY kind of looking mod, but it's uh, function over form right now. Hopefully I can get plans rolling on a custom design keyboard to hopefully integrate this a bit better than this solution. However, for now, I'm gonna probably enjoy this EVGA Z15 keyboard. Uh, for the time being because I'm already really liking the way that it sounds, the way that it feels, can't really argue. And the RGB, which it's also just completely customizable as well. If not in the software, then right with some keyboard presses, some combos with the keys on there as well. So no complaints from me for uh, for the keyboard. And uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to using this more. If you wanna see the Korg Nano Control 2, more details on that um like i mentioned there's a video on that i'll have it linked down in the description below as well as uh everywhere else down in the comment as well um but also feel free to stop by the streams i actively use that not just in streams nowadays if something is loud i'll i'll adjust it right there on the fly because it controls the windows volume control mixers or sorry the windows volume mixer sources so anything that makes noise in your computer can be controlled on this, including everything from individual programs to individual, um, well, anything really. So <laughs> anything that's in the volume mixer, it's really nice. I really do uh, recommend checking out that video. Anyways, that does it for me. Hopefully you guys like this video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button while you're down there and uh, maybe that bell as well so you uh, don't miss any of our uploads. And again, I stream to Twitch every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific. And uh, yeah, make sure to follow on our Twitter where I'm most active, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Links are down in the description below. And thank you for watching this video. We'll see you in the next video or maybe in the next stream. Hmm? Also, I have more videos linked right over here. Feel free to check any of those out. I'm really active in the comments, so drop a comment down below and I'll see you in there. Huh? Yeah? No? Oh, okay.